<laughs> wow, that was incredibly loud. Just, just right in my ear. Alright. There we go. Alright. Um, you know, if there's any kind of bull crap happening with my sounds, just let me know. I, um, I haven't streamed or cast in a while, so I'm uncertain what's uh, going on with my sound. If there's any issues or anything. No. Oh, well, the caps lock is on. There we go. And yes, neighbor, I will be casting. Oh, dude, I'll eat Doritos if you'll want me to. I was actually thinking about making the title, like, with reduced number of chips, just to be like a sassy bitch. <laughs> this time with no chips. Um, what is it? Gameplay? Gameplay is interface. I don't want to go to CTL 2.0. Okay. Turn to game. BO5. Go, go, go. Alright. Um, first map is Overgrowth. Oh, well, I'm not leader, so I can't do anything. I'm assuming no one wants to see my face, so I'm not going to turn off my webcam. I'm not that good looking. Hmm. Overgrowth, my favorite. Let's start again. for the game. Are you... Oh, for the love of God, Ben. <laughs> Suck it up. Get dirty, guys. <laughs> Jesus, Ben. See that right there, guys? I literally do not have Doritos in my room. Now I'm in a good place. It's kinda hot in here.
<laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I don't know why you would watch me casting if not for the burritos, to be fair. I mean, that's the whole reason that people watch me, is because Doritos all the time. Four, three, two, one. Kind of sound like the lady from uh, Team Fortress. Did that come across? All right. Let's do it. Here we go. Game one, best of five, in-house. Two very lovely young guys. Very good players. My coach versus some dude. No, one of my teammates. So, ooh, I like the CTL overlay. This is nice. This is really nice. All right. Damn. So anyway, spawning up here. Excuse me, had to burp. Spawning up here in the upper right-hand side of the map as the pink zerg, it is Rand Althor. If I refer to him as Ben, that's Ben. His opponent spawning in the bottom left-hand side of the map as the red Terran, also from Team Guns and Roaches, it is Funeral. I don't know Funeral's real name, so I'm not going to accidentally call him by it. Anyway, we have too early in the game for me to really say anything about, like, oh, well, you know, it looks like they're doing burp 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 because I don't know. Um, also, this is the first time I've used the CTL overlay, so if anyone wants to, you know, give me a quick, uh, quick note on how to change these and how to change this, that would be awesome, because I don't know how to do that. Also, to put the things in here, that'd be awesome. If someone just wants to let me know. The first time I've used this overlay, um, don't really know how to make the edits to it, but regardless... It's like pretty standard play from both players. Um, we have um, what I'm assuming is going to be a 15 from Ben, but who knows. We do have the 11 barracks coming out here and the 11 gas, so pretty classic 11-11 over here. Probably going to see a supply depot going down over there. If we look back up here, we do have, in fact, the 15 hatch. Uh, 15 hatch is a couple seconds late, but not terrible. So, eh, like 10 seconds late, but not horrendous. And then we're probably going to see a 16 pool, and then who knows where he'll go from that. Meanwhile, over here, this SDB hasn't been rallied yet to build a supply depot, so maybe not, but I would be amazed if it was up there at this end. So, supply depot coming down from the Terran player, 15 hatch going into the 16 pool, but it looks like it is a gasless 16 pool. So, it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm going to try control N, see what happens. Oh! <laughs> Oh, it's set up to do that. So nice. I still don't know how to change the best of nine, but how nice is that? Oh, and the production tab looks so good. Damn, this is a good overlay. Um, TB Ham, if you happen to be watching this now or see this at any point in the future, this is really, really nice. Thank you for putting this together for us. This is actually fantastic, man. Anyway, if we go back here and look over at the Terran player, we have another barracks going down and a good old meal. You see that right there? It's a meal. It's everybody's favorite unit. And looking back at the Zerg, we still have a gasless build, which uh, means we're probably going to be seeing... You know, I, I really want to make assumptions. I really want to say, oh, well, it's gasless, so he's going to be, you know, building as many queens and expanding. And but, but, but it's Ben. And when you cast Ben, the best way to do things is to say it's a game. It, it is a game, and we have no idea what's happening until it happens. So just know Ben's doing something. Anyway, over here, looking back at the barracks, we have a reactor coming out, we have a factory going down, so these two barracks, uh, Marauder coming out first. Um, and, uh, oh, Overlord getting shot, we have a Marauder coming out to back up these two Marines, we have four Zerglings moving right across the map, and these Zerglings, are they going to be able to do any damage to anything? That did leave Ben with a little bit of a food cap, but he fixed it pretty much right away. I already had the Overlord on the go. That will set him back a little bit with getting another Overlord out, but not too terribly. He'll still be in a pretty good place, but if we follow these lanes going up on the ramp, are they going to be able to get in before the rest of the ramp goes down? These lanes aren't going to be able to do much damage, but hopefully they can get around to scout. They decide not to, as two of them do die, and the other two are going to run back to probably try and keep an eye on the El Naga Tower, but they will be chased down by this SCP and this Marine. Meanwhile, we have the Zerg player taking his third base, while well, he finally takes two gases, one at each base, and 
uh, lings coming out of all of these. So we'll see what happens with those lings. We do have six drones on the way, but 12 lings as well. Those lings, um, I'm probably not going to try and break through this or anything. Probably just defensive. I can't imagine he's going to try and break anything if he doesn't have banes or speed. Um, so that SCB is going to get far enough in there. What is he going to see? That SCB is not going to see behind the minerals. So that he actually has absolutely no idea what's happening here. Because from that vision, he doesn't know there's a third. He doesn't know if there's anything happening around here. So, really, who knows at this point. But that does leave Ben with yet another food cap. So that'll be interesting to see where that works out. Meanwhile, if we look at the production tab, we have the Zergling Zerg speed on the way as the third is just about to finish up and pretty much just waiting for that food cap to end as the Baneling Nest goes down. Meanwhile, over here, we have another command center and no production out of the factory. Pretty much just waiting for the command center and hanging out with this bunker and enjoying life. Now we have some wings moving across the map. I wish I had any idea what that meant. Um, 10 M custom. What? Yeah, I have no idea what that means. Um, dear chat, please explain. I am lost. Anyways, the main nest is going down here. We have the third gas coming up. Weird saturation over here. Two out of three. It's interesting, but you know, I trust Ben. I'm sure he's doing what he needs to do. Well, over here we have something going up there, and he just started a huge wave of drones. So, you know, basically, you know, Ben coming down here and scouting this out, he sees his opponents going a little, little bit more macro. You know, going for this expansion, he, he's not too worried that he's going to get attacked. He's thinking, I'm fine. I can build some drones. I can relax. And we do have double Evo chambers going down over here at the natural, and we have the Roach Warren starting up for the third player. If we look over at his third, yeah. Pretty solid saturation across the board. We have another gas going down at the main. I'm about to have two fully saturated bases, and this third will probably be saturated pretty quick. So, all in all, some good stuff. He needs to use this queen. Use the queen, Ben! Whatever. We'll probably wait till injects are done. Oh, we do have movement across the map. Oh, man. And this is, this is scary. You know, this was scouted, and we do have three spines on the way, but those spines aren't going to hold very long against this kind of army. And this bling bling is just not that much, so... I'm I'm certainly worried what we're going to see happen here. One of the spines goes down, two of the spines go down, the bling! The banelings do make it into the army, but they don't do very much damage. Bench doesn't have that much left, and this army is starting to tear through his natural. We do see two more Banelings morphing up here, but with this natural getting completely sacked, it's unlikely that this army is going to be able to do very much. <laughs> ben with the pseudo-bad manners. The cheese is real. These two Hellions come in to join their counterparts, at least taking out this natural. It'd be interesting to see if they take out any more than that, but we do have a big army of Ling Blings happening over here. So, you know, when all this stuff... When all this gets up the map, it's probably going to get taken down by all these links, and he still has an almost fully saturated third, so if he can hold this off with this army and do some serious damage, this can actually still turn in Ben's favor. We do see this army over here. He has to keep those banelings alive. Oh, losing all those from that direction was a bad, bad thing. Now he knows that the third is here. He's able to move over to the third. And if he takes out this third, that's pretty much it. But... The huge Ling army moving in through the back. Is he going to be able to take this out before he loses the third? He gets this round on this half of the army. The Banelings move in, but they waste themselves on the Marauder. Not the kind of damage that he needed, but maybe enough to take them out. No. And that is GG. The first game goes to Funeral. All right. So here's the question. How do I... Edit the doohickey. How do I do the doohickey? Um, gameplay. CTL interface. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to edit it, so. Oh well. It's gonna say BO9, but it's not a BO9. It's not even kind of a BO9. I'm saying how.
Thank you very much, TV Ham. I figured there was some nice, simple way to do it. Um, so if I press... Oh, that's so nice! God, this is such a good system you have here. So, our next map is going to be Catalina, Catalina, Catalina. I don't know. I'm going to assume that it is in Spanish and call it Catalina because I speak Spanish and I like it that way. So anyway, Spa! Oh, TV Ham is still here. Hey, TV, um, if you also want to tell me how to change these little doohickeys, you know, like who has how many wins, and shift number is right score. So female has one. Oh, that is so nice! Anyway, so if we look over here, the current leader in the series, leading one to nothing, it is the Blue Terran Funeral. Beep, 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 beep. And his opponent spawning in the left side of the map as the pink zerg it is randall thor usually referred to as ben because that's his name so we have pretty much the same opener coming from both of these players we have spy going down followed by barracks and uh, 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 uh? 12 racks okay 12 racks barracks at 12 followed by more scvs instead of the uh gas like last time so Definitely, um, definitely a different build for our Terran player, but only by a little bit. Just going 12-14 instead of 11-11, but still taking that slightly earlier gas. Not quite early enough to be worried about any Reaper pressure, but early enough to be getting some units out pretty quick. Um, meanwhile, over on the Zerg side, we have that same 15 hatch coming out, and we're going to see a 16 pool, I assume? Which, again, would be the same thing that he did last game. And there it is. There is 16 pool. All right, so same build so far coming from both of these players. And uh, pretty much what will make it now is if this SCV moves over and makes a barracks again, then it's the same thing we saw last time. So that'll be that'll be the uh, build order to watch out for. That'll be the build bit to watch out for. Just to see what he's doing, but it looks like he's going to be going for a faster expand? No, that's just a scout. Okay, that's fine. He's running out of the barracks already, and there's got to be something happening that is fun to talk about. No? Just everybody building drones? That's fine. No one's going to do anything exciting for me. I get it, guys. I'm not upset. I'm just angry. Queens and Ling's coming down. Reaper about halfway finished and a command center here we go so it's, it is the faster expand from FEMA rather than going for the second barracks in the factory um, that second expand is going to mean he's going for more of a macro gain and less of an all-in last time was definitely a lot of an all-in so definitely cool to see more macro play from these players because I really enjoy watching Ben's late game especially, and from what I've seen today and watching a couple games, Funeral's late game is super, super fun to watch. So, let's keep an eye on this little guy over here as he moves across the map. He does get intercepted by some Zerglings. Oh, he, he's probably not going to lose it, but honestly, if this Reaper can take out a Ling, even one, I mean, that's 25 minerals wasted. It's, it's not a huge deal, but it's enough to be, like, impressive. And losing this Reaper is really sloppy on Funeral's part. Um, it's just... There, there's just no reason to lose it, you know? There, there's no reason you should have had to lose that. But so it goes. The Reaper is gone now. We do not have another Reaper on the way, but we do have another Gas on the way. And this is turning into an Orbital... We do have another refinery on the way, and the factory is building up to a tech lab as the starport goes down. So a pretty average um, fast expand 111 from Funeral, who is now finishing the wall off over here. But we do have a couple of links moving across the map, and these links are probably going to be used just for scouting. There's not enough of them. You know, I would never see three links and be like, oh man, that's pressure, he's going to fight. But once again, Ben... Going in, seeing this thing shooting, and stopping, rather than trying to scout out the main. So interesting. And if we look at his vision here, he has no idea what's happening in the main. He has absolutely no vision of the main. So it's interesting that he didn't try to use those lings to scout out. But we do see metabolic boost coming up along with the Roach Warren. So we have ling speed on the way a lot earlier than last game. And we do have, what, three gases? Two gases. 
but gas a lot earlier than last game, and the Roach Warren a lot earlier than last game. So, uh, definitely going a lot more aggressive over on the Zerg side, because we do not have an expansion either. And last game, that third came out around 6.30, so a lot more uh, micro-intensive and a lot more aggressive from Ben, while we're seeing a lot more macro-intensive over from Funeral. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in the later stages of the game. We have that third gas finishing up, and if he's going for Roaches, it's probably going to be just the three gases, realistically. And Roaches start to pop out as he does saturate that gas, and now we have two fully saturated bases. Granted, it's only three gases, but it is all fully saturated, and it's a very good income right now. If we look at the income tab, it's pretty much even, actually. I was expecting it to be a little higher for Ben, uh, and it is a little higher over time, but in general, pretty even compared to what I would expect. We do see the third base going down as this little baby hit squad of roaches starts to build up into what could be a pretty scary hit squad of roaches. Now, the scan over there was at the main. He's going to see a couple of roaches moving around, but he's not going to see any tech. So that's that's an interesting part of that, because the tech is down here, there's nothing to be scanned out by Funeral there. So unless he launches another scan, he has no idea what's going on at his opponent's base. Which is good for Ben, because he can pretty much do whatever he wants at this point. And I guess what he wants is to make two evolution chambers and go up to layer tech. Which is just fine by me. So it'll be... Damn fun to watch. So if we look over here, we do have a Banshee moving in, starting to do a little bit of damage on the hatchery, and it's probably not going to take it out. It's probably not going to be too big of a deal. He does have the spore crawlers that he needs at his main and at his natural, which are going to hold that off if it tries to move over here. And in the meantime, he needs to build up this hatchery, starts to build an overlord. And surprisingly, letting the hatchery take a lot of damage. Um, I can't imagine Ben will let it die. But I'm surprised he's letting it take as much damage as he is. Now we do start to see queens moving over, and now that the Banshee has lost its cloak, the queens are moving over, and the Banshees are going to fight back, but it's probably going to lose itself. It starts to run away, and the queens can't move very quickly off of that creep, so the Banshee's going to get itself away. going to move back here, gain some energy, and return later when it can really fight. But by then he's going to be able to see, so it's not going to do too much. So looking over here at the 8-man Roach Squad, the Roach Squad is not going to be able to do much damage if it tries to move in, because three tanks and a bunker. So uh, Roach Squad needs to keep itself together. If we look at the unit tab right now, we have nine Roaches, and that's the whole kit caboodle for Mr. Ben. Which is interesting, because he doesn't actually have higher income. He just has a lot more harvesters. So this is going to be a little bit rough. Um... Just in the sense that, oh, that Banshee does go down. It's a little rough for Ben in the sense that he does not have really the army that he needs. And we do have a third base coming out right now, landing over here for Funeral. Funeral with the missile turrets, clearly planning for a Spire to go down. As far as I know, there is no Spire. Yeah. Yeah, at no point has Ben built a Spire or given him reason to believe he's building a Spire. And yet, it goes down. So, we do see... The Infernal Pre-Igniter going down. It's like the most intense sounding upgrade. It's really just Hellions. It's not a big deal. Um, I need something interesting to happen. I really do. Um, but still nothing. Just more tanks on the way. More fire. Oh, that's something I'm excited about. Okay, look at all those roaches. Oh, man. See, now it's a roach party. These roaches are 1-1. One, one. They're having a little bit of a party. If we look at the, what is it, active forces? Huge, huge lead from Randolph Thor. So that's going to be good to watch as he does start to move these roaches over here. If he catches this, does he know there's a third? He does. He sees that there's a third. He sees that it's unprotected. There's no army to move over here. Feudal is going to have to start moving his army, but he's probably going to be able to take out this third before that. It is a planetary fortress, but it's not nearly enough to defend itself. The roaches are going to be able to take it out. They take... Do they get out in time? Uh, this army is just immobile. Honestly, Ben can probably engage. This is just... Oh, no, they're sieging up. He needs to get himself out of the way before those start to... Just, he does see them start to shoot. He does start to move the roaches back, but he has this high ground vision, and we can see here he's... He, Take advantage of this high ground because that scan's going to go away in a second. Oh, I heard the Thor noise. Ooh. So we do have Thors coming out. 
Uh, the fourth base is up for Mr. Randall Thor, and he's starting to sh have this Overlord poop all over that potential third. And we do see another command center being built to replace the old one, but Ben needs to position his roaches better. He does take out one of the tanks, but he's losing so many roaches in response. Oh, these Hellbats are just tearing through the roaches. He's very out of position. Ben needs to move his roaches out of the way. He does have a huge supply lead, but he lost way too much in that fight. He needs to be a little more careful about these things. Pretty solid creep spread going across the map, though, and with these uh, two bases being blocked, that does help him keep his economic lead for a while, which, if we look at the income tab right now, is pretty significant. We're looking at about 2,000 income to 1,400 income. So definitely an advantage for Ben. We see some mech play coming out of his opponent, who right now is making 1-1 one, one vehicle and ship upgrades. Meanwhile, Ben is getting up to 2-2 two, two upgrades for his army and has gotten a huge roach hit squad yet again. So when this 2-2 two, two finishes up in, I'd say maybe, what, like 30 seconds? Yeah, 30 seconds. It's going to be kind of painful. It's, it's going to hurt, you know? may not be a killing blow, but it's going to hurt. What do you see moving right now? And these tanks are unseated right now. They're completely out of position. If the roaches can get there in time, but instead of sending all the roaches, he moves out of the way and sadly is not able to take them down. Honestly, all of these roaches against unseated tanks probably could have taken them out, but not enough. Not enough at all. If you look over at Ben's side of the map, his vision, he can't tell what's there. He does see this army start to move. He does know that the tanks are on siege. He's going to try to get to the high ground, but as the tanks siege up, there's Really, I just don't see him getting enough of a sword. He's sending more units over to the other side. He's pushing in. But a good call by Funeral, moving them back so that... See, this is zoom out, right? I don't remember how to zoom out. Crap. Well, there's a button to zoom out, but I don't remember what it is. Regardless, um, basically Ben wanted to send half his army here, half his army here, and mix them. But because Funeral decided to put his army back here... It was a lot harder to, for him to get that surround, which made the tanks a lot less useful, which put them in a very good position. Oh yeah, shift Z, not shift minus. Thank you. There we go. See see what I mean now? So he wanted to send some down here, some through here, but these are back here, so he would have had to go all the way around. So essentially what I'm saying is very good positioning by funeral, but very bad positioning by Funeral, trying to take out some of the creep, but it's going to give Ben the opportunity to see where he is. He picks off a couple of his units, leaving Funeral at a 25 supply disadvantage. And honestly, he only took out like two creep tumors. It's not enough to make a really, really fast difference. And as much as I appreciate the slow-moving army of Funeral and the way he's trying to utilize it, look at this. I mean... <laughs> We're looking at more than enough minerals and gas for them to completely remax the Roach Hydra army as soon as he engages. And he's able to get back here through the front as Funeral unseages the tanks, then gets a fantastic position on these units. He takes out one of the tanks. The tanks start to siege up over here. Are they going to be able to get enough damage to take out this army? Ben has enough to remax. If he can just take these tanks out, he has the larva and the means to remax. He doesn't get all of the tanks because the Hellbats do come through. But if we look up at the units tab, when is he going to make more? When is he going to remax? Funeral with a fantastic engage right there, leaving Ben very much at a loss. But 27 more roaches and 9 more hydras coming out. And hopefully even more than that after 3-3 three, three upgrades are starting. We see some vipers, 9 more hydras, and Ben getting back up as quickly as he can. But Funeral knows he has a big advantage right now, and he's starting to move himself across the map, trying to take out his opponent's units. This could be game-ending if Ben doesn't respond to it properly. He needs those units to pop. Those Vipers could be completely game-changing, but they need to finish up. Right now, pretty much all Funeral has is anti-ground. I mean, Vipers are going to be able to just tear apart. But they need to be used perfectly. I want to follow this Viper. I want to follow these Vipers. Viper's sucking some energy out of the hatchery. Vipers now have the energy that they need. They start to move in. They are getting shot at, but are they going to be able to take out the tanks? These blinding clouds are doing some fantastic work for Randall Thor's army, but it's looking like it's not quite enough to do the damage that he needs as these Thors are tearing through the Viking, the Vipers, sorry. Ben's army is doing a lot of damage here, but is it enough damage? They both have pretty, pretty significant, wow, four Bane Nests, really? 
We're in four bane nests. Is that just a thing I said on accident? No, it's not four bane nests. Wow, and the GG comes down from Ben. All right, that puts Funeral up to 2-0 and in the series, which is scary. Fun. That's a fun match. But Fino's gonna go have a cigarette. So, hmm. Let's listen to a song then. Somebody name a song. Let's play the first person to say something in chat gets to hear whatever piece of music they would like to hear. Game. It's a good game. It's a GG. Somebody say music. Let's listen to Cooking by the Book. Best part. <laughs> the sock tanner riot. All right, I guess I get <laughs> one sec. All right, I, I can pull that off. Um, does this have this has my image on it? There is there is the Phantom Regiment sock tan. There you go. That is an entire summer of sock tan confirmed. <laughs> there you go, man. I'm gonna go back to games now. <laughs> yes, sir. You better. No one's watching. I got eight entire viewers. I'm practically internet famous at this point. If by internet famous you mean like CTL people watch me, because they're like our buddies. Anyway, I'm gonna grab this uh, uh, bucket. I'll drink while I pour it. Anyway, coming into our next game. That is wrong. 
is zero. That is two. Fantastic. It's the best of three. It is them, and it is them. And it is spawning in the upper left hand corner of Foxtrot Labs from Team GNR, the Pink Circuit's Randolph Or. Alright, and his opponent spawning in the bottom right hand side of the map from GNR, currently leading 2 to 0. If he wins this match, he wins the series. It is Funeral. Look at that logo. How nice is that logo? Look how sexy that logo is. Damn. What a nice, what a nice looking logo. So, as most games, we have the same start we always have. So instead of watching them build the same things they've built two games in a row, let's follow this overlord. I think an overlord's hard. I mean, look at him. People expect him to do so much. Fly across the map, gain vision, put his life at risk just so other people can see stuff. I mean, it's, it's tough being an overlord, yeah? You got a lot of responsibilities. A lot of people counting on you. A lot of floating around to do. What I want to know more than anything else is how overlords fly. Like, is there is there canonic lore for that that explains, like, overlords fly because mer 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 Because right now it seems like overlords fly because, um, you know, the, the little the holes, like, suck in air and push it out or, um, or something like that. Yeah, there's really no explanation for why overlords are able to fly. It seems completely illogical. By the way, if you look at the production tab, it's literally the same game that it has been the last two times. Like, if anyone's upset with me for following this Overlord, you can go watch the previous games and see the same thing. I figured we'd rather joke around a little, be a little bit goofy, than watch the exact same game happen for a second time. Plus, like, it's an Overlord. Oh! Old Head Gamer makes a good point. There could be some Vespine action. Maybe those little things are, like, Vespine sacks. And, uh... Vespine could be like lighter than air, so it lets them like float. You know, it could be like a, it could be like a. Uh, oh, what are the things called? That fish have. You know, fish have the like swim, swim bladder. Is it called swim bladder? It's something like that. Fish have a thing that allows them to swim, and change their level by like taking air in or taking air out. Maybe it's that sort of deal, but with like, instead of something that's lighter than water, it's something that's lighter than air. Of course, by lighter I mean less dense than. But you guys are all smart people. You know what I mean. Anyway, as we see the same game going down for a second time, this command center is coming out at the exact same time as it did the last game. The queens and lings are coming out at the exact same time as they did last game. The reaper is coming out at, get this guys, the exact same time as last game. So, as much as I love casting, um, best ofs get crazy when it's the same thing over and over again. It's really difficult to enjoy. So we do have the bunker coming down here to block off the natural from the third over from Mr. Funeral. He's moving this lovely Reaper across the map. And this Reaper is just ready to go. I mean, this Reaper is just going to reap some souls. Oh, 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 oh. Interesting choice for the Reaper to hunt down the Zergling instead of going for the initial intel. Um... Oh, but if we look back here, these things are doing a little bit of damage over here because there's not really much for uh, combating, you know? There's just another Reaper and another Marine, and he looks over here, he sees that there's not an expansion yet, but that's bad for Ben because if we look at his vision right now, he doesn't see that there's an expansion on the way. He has no idea what's happening here, so he looked over there, he thinks he's on one base, but actually his opponent's going for a second base, so he has misinformation out, which is scary. So, Mr. Ben is going to throw down a Roach Warren, as he is very apt to do. He's going to just hang out for a little bit, probably going to take a second cast. There it is. A Bogey's got three games in a row. Nothing has changed. Absolutely nothing has changed. We have two refineries coming down here. Last refinery over here with Venus, and we're going to have two fully saturated bases. But this time, instead of going for the Starport, he's taking another factory. So a little bit more ground units happening over on Funeral's side. A little bit of a difference now that we're six and a half minutes into the game. And it'll be interesting to see what he ends up doing with that. Now, these two Reapers are chilling over here, not really doing anything. Um, that is interesting, but he's not really using them for anything. Man, an astounding amount of nothing is happening. Where do I hear noises? Who's fighting? 
No one's fighting. Oh, they were fighting this. That makes sense. Okay, so the Queen's are starting to break down these uh, rocks right here so that he can put his third in... Interesting. No, I mean, that is where the third goes. Intriguing. Anyway, meanwhile, we have two more overloads moving. If we look over here, we have a wall off. Finished up. Totally walled off over here. Starting to get some saturation over at the second base. The first base is fully saturated. Second base is not fully saturated. If we look at the income tab, it's actually a little better for funeral despite the lack of saturation, which I don't understand. Uh, can someone explain to me, like, am I missing something here? If we look at the income tab, we have 45 harvesters to 34 harvesters, and yet we see the same income for both players. But if we look at his natural, there's a lot more. Oh! How did I miss those? I'm sorry, I was bitching about income and I missed a little actu actual action. Missed some action, I apologize about that. So that was, that was my mistake. Meanwhile, over here we do have this last Hellion running away. Is he going to be able to take it out? No, the Hellion's going to get away from the wretches, but he did a fantastic, fantastic job holding that off. Yeah, I get how mules work, but like, that was a huge disparity. I mean, if we're looking at a guy here with 16 and 19 with fully saturated gas, and we have a guy over here who had, at the time, 4 on his natural and 16 on his main, I mean, he had one or two meals, but that's still not enough to justify that big of a... Yeah, no, I, I get he had more on gas, but... I mean, just looking at worker counts that were listed, like, right here, it was 16-16 for Ben, and 16-4 for me, for Funeral. And yet, there was, like, a, no disparity in mineral income. Which I understand meals, but he didn't have, like, 12 meals. You know, are meals more efficient miners than SCVs? I don't play Terran at all. I figured meals just mine five per chunk, like an SCV does. more roaches on the way, 1-1 one, one on the way, gonna see something interesting, hopefully soon. I'm I'm relying on Ben to do some serious roach pressure. In the oh, it looks like he just lost another one of his units, another overlord. That's happened two or three times now. I'm um, trying to get that scouting intel, but losing a lot of overlords in the process. I need some action. I need some action. And I'm usually really good at casting, like, not very action-packed games. You know, I usually do a good job of being like, no, this is so cool. But it's it's tough when you get to the third match. Oh, he does take out that sensor tower, so that was a good pickup for him. But good positioning over here. Nice response time by Ben, only taking one shot from his tanks. And a lot of tanks over here for Funeral. It'll be interesting to see how Ben responds to this. He does take his fourth. He's got mining happening there. He's got three fully saturated bases. He's in a good place as far as mining goes. Even taking a fifth, which seems a little greedy. But, I mean, he does have a lot more income going on right now. Meanwhile, his opponent is attempting to send a third base out. He looks like he's got the stuff to protect it. We'll see what happens with that as we see roach movement across the map. And I really hope these roaches do some stuff. We do see swarm hubs coming out, but only two. So I'm not going to put too much stock in there yet. I mean, it's, it's two swarm husks. Oh, see, now there's more swarm hosts. That's what I like to see. So now we got a little bit of swarm host action going on. 
sitting a good healthy eight, right? One, two, three. Yeah, eight. I can count. Yeah, because a row is eight. A row is always eight, and it will always be eight. Uh, explosive noises, always good. Able to do a whole lot of damage on that bunker. And right now, a huge supply lead for Randall Thor. I mean, if he can if he can use this really to his advantage, he has a monster of a supply lead. And in just a second, he's going to burrow these last three. He's going to move his units in. He does take out that bunker completely. And I think what this comes down to is free units are really good units. I mean, now we're sitting at what? Oh my god. Yeah, he's sitting at 16 swarm hosts. 15 of them are burrowed. The last guy's going to join in just a second. 16 swarm hosts is going to do a lot of damage, especially with the creep starting to get into his base. And Funeral's on three bases against Rand's five. This looks like he could start to go Ben's way if he's willing to play the slow game. And this is an interesting an interesting gameplay because in the last couple games, Ben has pretty much seen that his opponent is going for the later game. And he said, like, okay, I see that that's what you want to do. I see how you want to play this. And I'm going to respond by building a fast army so that my fast army can try and opposition your slower army. But now this game, he's saying, you know what? I have the stronger economy. I know I have the econ to beat you in a long, slow game. So I'm going to just build swarm hosts and play the slow game against you. And it seems to be working in his favor. He's taking out units, and all he's lost so far is his free units. And Ben, being the person he is, is using his transfuses on his free units. And it's working. It's doing very well. But he needs to move that queen out of the way if it takes up the... Oh, and he gets the queen out of the way just in time to make sure that he doesn't lose a bunch of his locusts, which is a very, very good catch and a good play by Ben. He is continuing to macro back home, and he has an insane amount of minerals and gas right now. So no matter what happens now, all he has to do is just keep pushing forward, keep pushing the creep forward, keep letting the swarm hosts do their thing as the locusts do little bits of damage at a time, and it's going to come right down to he has the better economy. And right now, he has his opponent locked in. See what this mobile roach force up here He's in a really good place because this Roach Force is so mobile. No matter what his opponent decides to do, Ben's always going to be able to shut it down. Like right now, he sees over here that there's a base trying to fly in to get the hidden fourth. And he's just going to be able to go right underneath it, sends in a couple Mutalists to tag it out. As the Locusts over here just keep moving in and distracting his opponent, the Unburrow and the Reburrow, so that everyone starts to pop at the same time. He's probably going to be able to take this out. And in the, in the slow v. slow, although we do see some ravens moving in, they're going to be able to do secret missile on Randall Thor. Swarm hosts, do they kill them, though? No, it is not enough for a killing blow. He ends up taking two of them, but it took three secret missiles to take out those two. Meanwhile, the roaches are going to start to move in here with the locust swarm. And as the locusts move in, the roaches are going to try and take some of that damage. But the fact of the matter is, Ben is able to remax his army as quickly as he loses it. And we see here he's at 200 before he even loses units. And he's going back up to 200 with Mutalisks. This is a fantastic choice for Ben, because right now his army composition, or his opponent's army composition, is completely ground units. So yeah, these units, you know, these tanks can spend their entire day going to town on these Locusts. But as soon as those Mutas hatch, that's a huge swarm of Mutalisks that's going to be able to take him out. Now if we look over here... If we look at the units tab, we see 27 of them. 27 mutas starting to flock in over here. They're going to be able to sneak in. They take out one of the ravens. They're going to be able to tear right through this missile turret. They're going to be able to take out all of these tanks. These tanks were the only hope. These tanks were Jadong, the foreign hope. But the Seeker Missiles go down on the Mutas, and instead of moving the Mutas into the ravens, he tries to run away from the Seeker Missiles. He does get away in time, and he's able to save his units. That was scary for a minute. I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to do it. And now the Ravens are just getting picked off one by one. He was trying to build some missile turrets, but with this kind of mutilisk, it's unlikely that we're going to see Funeral able to hold this off. And I think we're going to see this go into a fourth game. Meanwhile, these units are still stuck here with the Locust, because if he moves these tanks, the Locust can start to get into the base and do some serious damage. So he's stuck. He has very little to take care of these mutilisks. He has no way to use them to move the tanks over. 
the tanks can defend themselves if they wanted to. And Funeral is going to have to get the economy that he needs to build anti mutilist units. But he needs a lot more than minerals to do that. Uh, although I do think it's an interesting choice for Ben to be spending his time over here on the planetary. He should be over here taking out these siege tanks before Marines get out. And I'd be afraid of his opponent building a big old chunk of Marines. I don't think he is. Yeah, he's building Thors, which are a very good counter. But, you know, with that kind of with that kind of mineral, I would expect just barracks upon barracks and a lot of Marines to come counter these Mutas. And those Marines are going to be useless if these Locusts can focus on them, and that can't happen until these siege tanks get taken out. Was that an 120? Wow. Look at... I'm screenshotting that. Sorry for the lag. A quick screenshot. 115 kill siege tank. I hate that word. All right. So if we look back over here, the mutas they are taking down the rest of those Vikings. Two thirds come over. Is it enough of a mutalist army to take them down? The mutas start to focus down the first door. They do a lot of damage on him and a lot of kickoff damage onto the second one. They're able to take out the second door. Both of the thors go down. We have more ravens moving in, but they go down before they're able to drop anything but an auto turret. The third base goes down for funeral. Completely sacked the third base. The tanks are still being taken care of by the Swarmos. We have two more Mutas on the way, but three Thors just hatched. And those Thors have the potential to do a lot of damage to these Mutas if Ben is not careful. We see the Thors coming down over here. They start to shoot along with the Missile Turret over here, but Ben's going to try and use his mobility to move across, take out the Missile Turret, get out of the way, and he's still, look at this, he has so much. As quickly as he can lose anything, he's going to gain everything back, and he still has Locust moving across the map, and honestly, it's a numbers game. And having taken out the fourth, the hidden fourth, the third, blocked a third over here, blocked a third here with creep, there's just no way for Funeral to get the economy that he needs to take his opponent out. And it's it's just sitting back and waiting for death at this point. Meanwhile, these meters are moving across the map, checking for any hidden expansions, making sure they're safe, and they are. They're not going to lose anything. We're just seeing Funeral trying to drag this game out. He is trying to rebuild his third, but he's going to come over here to find an Overlord blocking that potential. Not going to be able to build his command center. Still going to be on two mined out bases with only 180 right now. 180 mineral income. There's just no way Funeral can win this. Just based on the economy alone and this huge swarm of mutalists is coming in. Looking at 19 mutalists right now. 19 total? Yeah, 24 total. 19 in this little pod right here. 19 mutas in this pod, starting to take the tech labs off of these. I'm not going to see any more Thors pretty soon. This is just so much damage that Ben's able to do. And yeah, Thors are scary, but especially if they position themselves badly, there's just not that much that can be done. You know, it's, it's a game of time, it's a game of numbers, and it's going to drag on for a while. I mean, I think we'll see this drag on for quite some time. But it's definitely going to end with Randall Thor's victory. I just don't think it's possible. You see a good Seeker going down. Kills one of the Sormos, but only one. Mutalis move in to take out these Ravens. Take out one of them. Don't fight get two. And oh! The Thors do huge damage on the Mutalisks. Some fantastic damage goes down on the Mutalisks. And oh, he's rebuilding a Spire? Did a Spire get sniped? I think... I think his spire got sniped. No, he's building a backup spire. Okay, that's fine. So we do see a greater spire now, which is going to turn into... Oh, <laughs> yes. Corruptors, which I think we're going to see turned into Broodlords. We're going to see some Broodlord Swarm Host play. Oh, ben right now is the exhibit of late game Zerg. He's saying, hey, bro, I heard you like free units. So I got some free units to fly over your free units. So you can have free units while you can get free units. And he is ready for it. Now we see the first couple of Broodlords hatching. They're going to be able to go around the side and get some really good positioning over here. See, the thing is, as these Locusts come through, I can zoom out. As these Locusts come through here, the Broodlords can get some action here. And that extra flank can make all of the difference with tanks. Because tanks can only shoot one direction at a time. So splitting up your army like that is a huge deal. 
and he has all these corruptors over here. Is he going to use the corruptors? No, why would you fly those corruptors in? And the GG comes down from Funeral, knowing that he just does not have the economy. And we're going to see our first win from Mr. Randolph Orr. Good third game. That was really fun to cast. My voice hurts a little bit, but it was so worth it. Ugh. I need my drink! Oh, here we go. Alright, got a little monster action. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to hit the windows key. <laughs> fucking hate swarm runs. Well, I fucking hate that. for them to uh, finish talking and pick out a map. I got nowhere to be. Anyone who's here currently watching, thanks for coming. He thinks I'm kidding. I literally just talked about it with the words. Oh, do we need more music? Sounds like we need more music. He says hold up, so we're going to watch the fan regiment. Because we have the time. We have the means. Let's watch me as one of my favorites. It's the best way to kill time is to watch some drum corps. still going to listen to this.
Oh, beautiful. So anyway, that was a good time killer. God, never get sick of that piece. So, spawning in the upper left hand position in merry-go-round, the pink zerg, it is Guns and Roaches, Rand Al Thor. One last game with some awesome swarm host play, pushed into that late game against Funeral's mech style. If we look over here at his opponent, that is Funeral himself. He's been playing some pretty good mech. He's currently 2-1 and one in the series, won the first two games pretty decidedly, and I only lost the last one because, you know, if you do the same thing three games in a row, it's pretty likely your opponent's going to figure out what's going on, find a way to counter it. That's sort of how these things happen. Regardless, um, both of them are doing the same opener. And to be fair, they warned me they would do the same opener. Which is why I figured we could listen to the music for a minute, because we've got plenty of times. Same opener, guys. Incredibly exciting. I know. I'm sorry. Oh, but no Reapers. So a slightly different opener, actually. All right. Something different. We have no Reapers. And we have the second Barracks one. Oh, so this is like when he did that first game. You know, where instead of going for Reapers into a factory, he, uh, he's only staying on the one gas, building a second Barracks. And he's going to use those Barracks. This is, seems to be a little more bio-heavy. It's interesting. So that's good. That'll be good to watch. Um, I don't know, the same thing for the upteenth time. Meanwhile, the spawning pool is finished. The natural is finished. The queens are on the way. The four wings are on the way. The bunker at the natural is on the way. The second command center should probably pretty soon be on the way. And everything is the same as it was the last three times. Queens! Two more queens! Another gas is opening from Ben. The same game. This is really intriguing. Don't get me wrong. These games have been really fun to cast in the late game. They've been really fun to watch. I hope you guys are enjoying it. It's good to be back in casting and in my room and on my Ethernet with 430 megabit download. Oh, man. It's good. It's good. You know, tour was a blast. Doing drum core was a blast. But it's good to be back and playing some StarCraft. But, despite how good that is, it's really hard to cast the same opener four times in a row and sound excited about it. So I'm sorry, guys. I'm just going to power through until the late game and then enjoy that quite a bit. But, if anyone is sitting in chat right now wants to, you know, talk about anything, just, you know, tell me what's on your mind, tell me how your family is, and everyone healthy and happy and doing well for themselves. I will be here. I will be here and happy to talk. Is that a Roach Warren? Yep, Roach Warren coming down around the same time for Ben. Uh, keep the Zerg room here just to make sure his opponent does move out, and that's a very good choice for him because the first game, you know, Fino was able to win that first game with this build, going for that quick extra barracks because he built this basically all in, this very big all-in of an army and just pushed across the map and was able to win it because there was you know, not enough vision for Ben to see that these units were starting to move out, not enough vision for him to respond accordingly. And so having the Zirkling here is actually really good for him to be able to see the way the units are moving and be able to see if his opponent starts to put any pressure out of his base. So that's a very good choice for Ben. Meanwhile, we see the second extractor coming down, the third and fourth extractor also coming down. And we're going to see some full saturation for both of these bases as he starts up the third hatchery. And do we have layer tech yet? Probably not. Nope, still hatchery. So no layer tech yet. Not really very many units yet. And a semi-sizable army starting to build up for his opponent. So 
We will see what happens when that army moves out. Like I said, Kingo won the first game with this exact same push. So it'll be interesting to see what happens this game when he does that push. Will his opponent be able to take it out? Will he be able to scout it? Will he be able to fight back? We don't have two spines on the way. So, good spines as this army begins to move. They're moving. Let's follow them. Let's follow them. There we go. All right, so we're following these units across the map. We're going to see what they do. They're probably going to put some pressure on. Oh, here we go. He's moving in. He takes down the first spine. He takes down the second spine. But the Bailings come in. They take a huge chunk of the front of this army. And this first Roach hit squad, along with the Queens, is able to take out quite a bit. But there's a lot behind it. The next round of Roaches comes into the back. We do have nine Roaches on the way. But are they going to be enough to fight? Once this comes through, zero, zero upgrades here. Zero, zero upgrades here. Nine Roaches on the way. Ben has to pull back and move this as much as he can. He's pulling the drones and pushing them in, but it's looking like they're going to go down. Roach is hatching, taking both sides of these units. Are they going to be able to take the Marines down? It's looking like a lot of no, but the Roaches are coming. More Roaches from the back, and no, the GG goes down, and Funeral takes his third game and takes the series. 3-1 win for Funeral. A lovely set of games to cast. Good time for everybody. Those were fun games. <sighs> Anybody else want to play the show? Probably do something else for anyone who's still walking, but walking. For anyone still watching, but I don't know what that something else would be. I mean, we're just hanging out for now.
Alright, I'm gonna get off for now. Um, I'll probably stream some ladder later than that. I'm gonna be up pretty late, but for now I'm gonna call that a cast. Uh, just so I can stop this VOD and make sure that it comes up just the VODs of those games. So, everybody, thanks for stopping in. Thanks for watching. Uh, now that I'm back on good internet and not touring the country, I'm going to make a point of streaming a lot more often, especially in my ladder sessions once I hit plat, because I'm very, very close. So, see you guys soon. It's been real. It's been fun. I'll talk to you later. Adios.